it was a perfect day for passing weather-wise. So I, I don't know what the excuse is for not throwing for 600 yards, but they couldn't do it. Yeah, pretty quick, crazy. Come up that short, get get that close to 600 and not make it. But uh, man, uh, the first couple possessions were a little iffy for Ohio State, but uh, after that, the dam broke open, and I think they realized uh, probably somebody up in the press box that um, Utah had no matchup for Jackson Smith the Jigba. I mean, Clark Phillips did his best for as long as he could, but. Uh, after him, they had nobody that could really um, uh, keep tabs on uh, Smith the Jigba, and he got loose. Uh, I will say uh, this will go down as a neutral site victory for Ohio State, but it really should go down as a road win because, and Tony could attest, that when Ohio State was facing some third downs, it was as loud as any stadium that you would ever go to uh, in terms of the Utah people making it difficult they probably outnumbered the Ohio State people, and I'm going to be conservative when I say four to one, but it may have been five or six to one. Ultimately, uh, we know that Utah sold 35,000 tickets uh, through their school, whereas Ohio State sold 13. And then, obviously, you know all the other season or all the other tickets that are sold, uh, you know, through the Rose Bowl and, and different avenues. Uh, you know, accounted for the rest of the fans. But Ohio State was definitely the villain in this one. And uh, the heel uh, pulled out the victory uh, at the end, no doubt about it, uh, with uh, the, the amazing play of C.J. Stroud, who who he, he throws for 573 yards, is not the offensive MVP. He's got to be like, what, what's a guy got to do around here? And in all honesty, Reese Davis should have uh, gone into business for himself and just declared them the co offensive MVPs uh, after that game. I know there's only one trophy, but uh, they, they should have shared that award because that was certainly a two-man effort and really an 11-man effort. I mean, when you come down to it, because he had great protection uh, and uh, just uh, uh, the, the greatest passing onslaught in Ohio State history. And honestly, uh, I turned to Tony, uh, his his guy, uh, Tom Moore, was down on the field with me Um uh, taking photos and, and you know we were both down there and he and I share our, our snide comments to one another and I my first one was uh, your, your guys aren't aren't getting it done here today what's going on and then later on after about the third or fourth touchdown it was like they're gonna kill people next year you know <laughs> as the place is going nuts you know so that's what you kind of came away from that game thinking is who 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 or what is going to keep a, a, a limit on what that offense is going to do next year. No Garrett Wilson, no Chris Olave, no problem, because Marvin Harrison stepped right in. And Jackson Smith, the Jigba, is going to win the Bolitnikoff Award. And uh, C.J. Stroud's going to win the Heisman Trophy if they play anything close to that next year. Um, you know, again, football's a team game, and their, their defense could let them down somewhere along the way and they could lose a game, but I have a hard time wondering who who's going to keep that team under 35 points, points in a game next year. Well, they score 48 and they turn the ball over twice in the end zone. Like you want to throw <laughs> another, you want to throw two more touchdowns on there and make it 62. And we I talked to um, Kevin Wilson after the game about Jackson Smith and jig, but he's like, yeah, 15 catches, but 16 targets. Like, the first target, the first time they threw to him was incomplete. The next 15 completed. And you're talking about receptions of 50, 52, 50, 40, 30, 30. Like uh, it, it was ridiculous. And just one right after another. And the the accuracy of the throws, the, the catches. And I, I go back to the first time we ever saw Jackson Smith and Jigba in an Ohio State uniform was spring practice of 2020. Everything that people saw in the Rose Bowl we saw that day he was catching against everybody and all kinds of catches anywhere on the sideline, deep over the middle, making every single catch. And it was, it was, it was one of those moments where you're like, this guy is really, really good. Same thing happened the year before with Garrett Wilson. Then of course, after that practice, the world shuts down and, you know, we're still trying to dig our way out of it, but everybody saw all of his capabilities in this game. They, they saw it against Nebraska, uh, last year with the, just the one catch, you know, and then again 
what was it Nebraska this year where he had 15 catches. So he's shown what he can do. And then next year, who knows? I, I know the question is, do you leave him in the slot or do you move him outside, put a Mecca book in the slot? There's arguments for all of those. And I'm sure we'll talk about that 15 times before we actually get to spring football or whatever. I, I don't know that there's a bad answer, but uh, just the, the way he was utilized in this game and over the last half of the season, Mark, I mentioned this to you before the show, last five games for Jackson Smith and Jigba, 60 catches, 958 yards, which would put him as the, the that would be the 10th best pass receiving season in Ohio State history. And it was the last five games. And the two times without Garrett Wilson, he averaged 15 catches. And I, don't, I can't do the math real quickly, but like 290 yards receiving or whatever. And then the question is, where does that rank in individual performances in Ohio State history? Steve and I, I think we've we've been you and I have been in in the in the stadiums for all three 300 yard individual performances. Eddie George, Trey Sermon, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. I, I I honestly I don't know how you top this one. I try to sort it out myself. I posted a video earlier today and Tony and I were talking about some of these great performances and, and you have to put it in context, especially if you're talking offensive performances solely, of course, um, you're, you're not going to find the type passing numbers for any Ohio state player pre Dwayne Haskins period. You know, Troy Smith is going to put up the wins against Michigan and remarkable performances from a total offensive standpoint and so forth. But just because of the importance of the games, I'm still going to put Zeke Elliott kind of as a collection. Wisconsin, Alabama, Oregon is just mm -hmm. astonishing to me because of the pressure of the, the situation in each game and the opponents. But, um, what, what, you know, Tony, you touched on, you both touched upon it. You know, we, any college football fan could grab in any particular weekend uh, five to ten box scores that would have crazy numbers because of the nature of the game. But the quality of the throws and catches, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, against tight coverage at times. Sure, they, they got wide open at times. But, man, especially I think the quintessential one was the one from the left hash all the way to the right corner, you know, with uh, JSN – twisting yeah. with the ball over his head just the difficulty of that catch and that's like an Aaron Rodgers throw just unbelievable like uh like Jerry Seinfeld said about George Costanza when he got red hot one day uh you're you're I don't know what's going on here you're you're eating onions you're spotting dimes and uh George turns to him and says I'm Batman I'm Batman <laughs> that's what Ohio State had gone. I don't know which guy was Batman. I think, I guess Stroud was Superman and Smith the Jigba was Batman. I, I, I don't know, man, because they were putting on a clinic. And what was crazy was the one, the one over the shoulder to the right came right after they had hooked up on one to the left on a third down. It was like maybe it was fourth down. I don't know, third down or fourth down, and he runs a comeback route to the left sideline. And to hear Herb Street talk about it, it was kind of just they read the defender. The defender was inside of him. He cut outside. If the defender had played the sideline, he was to cut inside. And Stroud made the perf – Smith made the – Smith the Jigman made the right cut, and Stroud made the right throw, and the ball was there on time, and there's nobody around. And he catches it and converts the third down. He gets up – or fourth – I forget which it was. And he stood up, and he's all excited and whatever – and then they put him in the slot on the other side, and you're just like, oh, gosh. Here, here, you know, you, If you're watching the replay, you're like, oh, my God, I know what's coming. I can't believe they just hit those two plays back-to-back -to -back like they did. And, and voila, I mean, they go over the shoulder and just incredible, just incredible. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say. It was just uh, an amazing situation. It was as good a quarterback performance as I've seen anywhere, and – it wasn't just the passes to Jackson Smith and Jake, but he dropped some to Marvin Harrison. Uh, Mecca Agbuka really early on down the sideline. Just so comfortable, and it was really, really effortless and, and impressive. And so impressive, you start to take it for granted. Like, 
you, you put all of the focus on Jackson Smith and Jigba for all of it. And uh, you, like, cause that one, that, that, that late touchdown pass to Jackson Smith and Jigba was pretty much in line with where we were sitting in the press box, at least where I was. And uh, just incredible ball placement, incredible catch. And um, that these are throws that like, you just, you marvel at and, and you, you have to appreciate because it's not, it's not normal. Now, I said, I said, Guys that could do that, the last two quarterbacks, but it, it's not normal, so it should be appreciated. And uh, you know, now you have people saying, "Is it will it be Jackson Smith and Jigba or C.J. Stroud as the Heisman favorite next year, along with Bryce Young?" And I think you still go with the quarterback just because it it wasn't just Jackson Smith and Jigba; it, it was everybody that he was firing to in places where they could catch the ball and do something with it. 